Hello and welcome to NV Fine Art Studio. Today I want to talk about my set of brushes and share why I use these particular brushes, when I use them and how. As Joseph Zbukovic once said, just like the tires on your car, brushes are probably the most important part of your painting equipment. Cannot agree more. And I would also add, as every tire has its own purpose, so does every brush. In other words, your brush needs to be the right for the job you are about to do. Before I show you my set, I'd like to talk in general terms about what important to consider when choosing brushes. First of all, size. Big brushes are for big shapes and small brushes are for small shapes. For example, if you are doing painting on A3 or A4 paper size, 12 mm more brush is perfect for your first wash, where you most likely will be covering the largest shapes, sky and earth, and getting rid of the white of the paper. This 8 mm brush is perfect for the middle wash with middle size shapes like buildings, trees, cars, etc. Areas where you still need quite a bit of coverage and connections in between the shapes, but you don't have to be too precise and fidgety. And this 6 mm brush is perfect for the details. Details usually require precision and slowing down, and a small brush is perfect for this job. Remember, if you are questioning whether to go slightly bigger or slightly smaller, always pick a bigger brush than you think you need. So, even if you are painting on A5 paper size, I'd still paint with these three brushes. In general, larger brushes help to keep your painting fresh and loose. Dear friends, I have an announcement to make. I have launched my Patreon page. I'm focusing on two main aspects, being creative and improving your skills. So, the first tier is called Creative Watercolor. We will imagine, experiment and have fun there. I will be posting a full-time lessons for this tier every second week. If in addition to being creative, you wish to work on improving your skills, then the second tier Masterclass community is the way to go. The biggest difference from the first one is it offers access to two libraries, Creative and Masterclass, and access to Community Forum, where you will be able to post your attempts and questions and receive instructions from me on where and how to improve. I also have an Art Collector tier for patrons who, in addition to learning, wish to receive one of my paintings. It will be a large piece of art over quarter watercolor sheet and it will be one of the recent works. I will post it to you at my expense no matter where you are after 12 months of support. Thank you friends and I hope to see you there. Next you have to consider synthetic versus natural fiber. In theory natural fibers hold more water but they are quite expensive especially the larger the size of the brush. Here is a comparison of the same size natural, mix and synthetic watercolor brushes. As we can observe, the natural and the mix are very similar in release of water. They stay nice and consistent throughout the wash. But the pure synthetic brush releases it very quickly and gets dry in the middle of the sheet. Lastly, the fineness of the brush tip. Theoretically, you should strive for the sharpest point you can have, but again, it doesn't mean you have to go for the most expensive sable brush with the perfect sharpest tip. Mix of natural and synthetic or fully synthetic brushes would be perfect for this situation. For example, this fully synthetic brush has an excellent point. It goes from a very fine needle-like line to a thick one in an instant. Furthermore, it holds just the right amount of pigment for medium and small shapes, just in case if you want to switch quickly from painting a mass of foliage to little branches in between. So, let's have a look at my set. These are the brushes that I use more often than the others. I'm going to separate them into four groups. Large, Middle, Small, and occasional use. 
This will help me to simplify th things for you and answer the questions why, when and how in a more organized way. First, large brushes. It is usually mop style brushes size 14 and above. I have Jackson's Mop Pure Squirrel size 22. It is approximately 25 millimeters or one inch wide. Also, I have a Skoda Aquario size 18, just under 12 mil. And the last but not least in the big league is my Dynau number no. 5, and it's around 15 millimeters in size. Let's talk about when. In general, large brushes are for large shapes. For example, your overall first wash, skies, ground, and so on. This Jackson's mop is an extra large brush and covers very large areas very evenly and quickly. Plus, it holds a good point to skip or paint fine bits and pieces. It is an excellent brush for an extra large format painting. Skoda and Dynau are very similar in their purpose. Skoda has longer softer bristles and finer tip, but Dynau is closer to a round brush, but still has a very nice point. So, if I need to be more precise while painting a large shape, for example, leaving whites of the foam in the sea wave, I take a Skoda. But if I'm painting clouds with some washouts, I would take Dynau due to its rounded form and stiffer and shorter bristles. Why a large brush? When you paint your first wash, your gradient has to be nice and even. If you use too small a brush, you will definitely get streaky lines, unwanted changes in shades, and the worst is probably get muddy looking washes with dried hard edges. Using smaller brushes will lead to a messy looking painting with confusing messages of mood and atmosphere. How? Usually I use tea or coffee consistency wash with these types of brushes. I premix a few warm and cool mixtures, fully load the brush and keep the bit going. The good thing about having a larger brush is to cover the space with just one or two strokes without dabbing or fidgeting. Medium-sized brushes, between 8 and 12 mm in size. My most used are these two, Escoda Aquario No. 14 and Dynau No. 3. Escoda is on a larger side, around 13 mm, and Dynau is on a smaller side, 9 mm. Escoda Aquario, similar to its bigger sister, has slightly longer and finer bristles. It makes elongated marks, so rounded shapes are harder to achieve, but, due to its very fine point, it's incredible for leaving out small bits and pieces. Dynau has shorter and stiffer bristles. Due to its shape, it's actually easier to navigate and make smooth, solid shapes, like distant trees or clouds, but harder to leave out fine little details. Let's talk about when do we need to switch to medium-sized brushes. In general, medium brushes are for medium-sized shapes. I usually use them for my middle washes. For example, in a landscape or a street scene, it would be trees, buildings, transport, animals and any other aspects of the scape that are in middle value. Why? Medium-sized brushes are big enough to hold a good amount of water and small enough to slow down and be precise if required. In my middle wash, I try to keep my middle values connected, so I often need to rinse the pigment off and change the color. It would be very wasteful to do it with a larger size brush. How? I usually use coffee or cream consistency wash with these types of brushes. Similar to the light value wash, I premix a few different mixes. I fully load the brush and keep the bead going. The most difficult part is to keep the bit moist, as this consistency has less water and dries quicker. These are my small brushes. Squirrel Danayu No. 1 and Escoda Perla No. 10. Let's talk about when I use them. In general, small brushes are for small shapes. I use these two brushes for my final wash, the Duckers Ducks. In particular, I use Dynau if I plan to cover a slightly larger area and the Skoda is excellent for smaller and finer details. I especially like a Skoda Perla for doing dry brush technique, 
for making fine lines and painting over very small objects, like people in distance, branches, windows, and so on. Why? These two brushes are quite small and don't hold too much pigment, so they cannot cover large areas without the wash looking muddy. They are also quite stiff, in particular Escoda Perla, and are good for thicker, darker value pigment. How to use these brushes? I usually use cream or butter consistency wash with these brushes. If it's cream consistency, I may premix my darks, but if it's butter, I just use the pigment straight out of the tube. When I paint the darks, I try to be as confident in my strokes as possible. There is nothing worse than wobbly and fidgety details. They are usually a big giveaway for an amateur artist. Occasionally use brushes. This is my Art Spectrum 5cm or 2 inch Hague brush. I believe this is a gold bristle which is quite soft and hard to be precise with. It holds a lot of water and it's perfect for wetting the surface, doing a large wash or just being random and loose with your technique. It's nice to pick up different pigments on different sides of the brush and see what happens when they mix on the paper. This is my Chinese calligraphy brush. It's very good for making loose style tree foliage. But to do so you have to punish it quite a bit, squish it, twist it and turn it and then it looks like that and makes nice and random marks. This is my half inch flat synthetic brush. It has a nice straight edge and it's quite stiff, so it's excellent for creating strong lines and square shapes, such as buildings, fences, roads and so on. Also, it's quite thirsty, so it's really good for lifting paint and doing washouts. This is my spatula. I use it mainly to scratch highlights. It is best to use when the paint is still damp, but not extremely wet. Otherwise, you will have an opposite effect, a dark line instead of a highlight. These are my two Riga brushes. This one is a Mac Norris Trickster 00 with long natural bristles. The long length of the hair allows the brush to carry a good load of paint for a long distance. I particularly like to use it for tree branches. The other one is a silver black velvet script brush, size 1. It has shorter bristles and I believe they are made with a blend of natural squirrel hair and synthetic fibers. This brush definitely has more precision and less spontaneity, so it's perfect for things like electricity poles, wires and many other fine details. Thank you for watching, hope it was informative. If you want to see more, please like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video.